Hey NAI football fans, Corey Thorpe here with another edition of the NAI F-Ball podcast powered by AdCraft USA, your custom apparel, merch, and uniform experts. Our friends at AdCraft have been with us for many years now. They've run web stores for us multiple times. These guys are NAI fans and family who are experts in the apparel and merchandise world. AdCraft allows you to take the hassle out of ordering. Let their knowledgeable design and customer service staff handle everything from hosting the store online, shipping the product, and helping your customers so you can get back to the game. Find them online at adcraftusa.com. All right, NAI football fans, this is Corey Thorpe back with another edition of the NAIF Ball Podcast powered by AdCraft Custom Apparel and Merch, your custom apparel, merch, and uniform experts since 1974. Back with me tonight is Matt Schwartzler. Back to preview, the other side of the heart, the heart south. Um, it's always, both the north and the south are are good in their own way. I feel like the north has, has Grandview and a lot of good teams in the middle. But I feel like, it seems like, and, and I don't know how the loss of Evangel is going to affect it, but I feel like top through bottom, uh, these teams are going to be a little bit closer together. I think so. I think, too, in the side of the conference, you're looking at a lot more of these kind of dark horse contenders. We'll get into that a bit more. A lot more teams that can make noise that would otherwise be unexpected. I feel like you're what you see is what you get more with the other side. Well, let's start from the bottom. And the bottom here is going to be the newcomer to the Heart South. Replacing Evangel one for one, we just uh, alluded to it. Evangel is going over to the KCAC this year, and they are being backfilled by the Missouri Baptist Spartans, uh, who were four and seven and two and five last year in the MSFA Midwest, and they are the bottom team here. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how they come over to the heart because of you know, how we traditionally looked at, at the MSFA versus the heart. A hundred percent. I mean, you look at these SP plus numbers, uh, 70 on offense and 72nd on defense. This was a four and seven team, but like those numbers in the grand scheme of things nationally don't necessarily add up for them. I am curious to see how they do with Blake, uh, their, their linebacker, Blake Knight returning huge part of what they do. Um, so, or Kite, sorry. Kite, my apologies. I did the same thing. <laughs> but yeah, he's he's a big part of what they do. So it'll be interesting to see how he plugs into the new conference. Yeah, absolutely. 111 tackles last year. That's that's a big deal. They do lose graduate student Joe King uh, with, with his 55 tackles. And uh, you do lose first-team kicker O'Dane Reed there. But on the whole... You're returning most most to nearly all of your offense. Uh, you have two quarterbacks who basically split time last year, Ashton Strother and Cooper Brown, um, as well as running back Lionel Banks and Cameron Sloan that are all coming back. Um, you can definitely make some, some momentum off of that 78th offense there now that you've, you've got some, some returning uh, talent. But I think... Maybe the biggest thing is trying to find the one guy because the you know the old football adage if you've got two quarterbacks you ain't got none. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes for them. Um, I think on the defensive side of the ball too, though, um, kind of pivoting here, they return pretty much a good chunk of their production on that side of the ball, which will bode well. Yeah, I, I mean. You're you're mixing match there on the D line, and you've got to replace a lot of your secondary. But a majority of your linebackers are coming back, and and you can always build around your linebackers if that's something that um th they want to do to uh, try to help on b the other two levels there of the defense. You can you can maybe use those linebackers in creative ways. For sure, I'm I'm. I'm curious to see how this team plugs in to everything, everything considered. One of the, I just don't know. Yeah, no, 
Definitely. It'll be interesting to see them coming over, just like we talked about Arizona Christian coming over in, into the frontier a couple weeks back. One of the things that we've seen a little bit here, uh, especially on the, on the north side, but here on the south side, we're starting to see it here. Central uh, Methodist is up next with a new head coach, uh, Dave Brown there. Uh, who was the offensive coordinator at Missouri Western before coming to Central Methodist. Unfortunately, the Eagles just, boy, they struggled offensively. Just, there were, there was a about a three-game stretch at the beginning of the season where it was just, wow. Yeah, and this is a Central Methodist team, too, that the year prior was coming off of a playoff appearance. Is that correct? Yeah, they had a really stout defense and beat Baker to take the conference championship. Uh, had issues scoring. They had a quarterback that transferred uh, a, a little early uh, that they didn't have last year, um, and and that really kind of put a put a hamper on them a little bit. But wow, they uh, they definitely regressed to the mean hard there last season. Yeah. Um, on the bright side, though, they do have one of their mainstays on defense coming up, coming back, Lantez McClinton. Um, and pretty much on the offensive side of the ball, they have all of their leaders returning, all those position guys coming back. They at least have something to build off of. And with a 1-10 record, the, the sky's the limit. <laughs> yeah, you said it. I mean, that's that's very much the truth. You are losing uh, Davian Stockard, Stock as he's known, and, and Eric Mays there, but yeah, you do return basically all of your offense and about half of your defense. Um, you know, you get to build off of that, and just like we said for Missouri Baptist, you get another offseason in with your guys to to really, you know, get into wherever you can find room and just build that chemistry uh, you know, the O-line can can get together and, and uh, you know, really gel in place. And you, you, offense doesn't have to stay the same year to year. There's a lot of building that can be done between between seasons. For sure. And I think this team, a lot of guys on this roster have seen that they can put it together, like, within their playing career. So I think they can definitely rebound next season. Next up is the... Second most winning team in NAI history was supplanted from first last season. That's the Missouri Valley Vikings. We'll actually get to the winningest team in the NAI later on in this podcast. Crazy that one and two in the entire history of the NAIA are in the same division of the same conference. But here we are. Moval actually... They, that was a fairly good season for them. They've they've struggled for a while, and and to come up to about, uh, you know, average in SP plus, that's actually a step in the right direction for the Vikings. I think so, um, and that's why I love having SP plus on these. I feel like we mention it every episode, but it's like the record doesn't show the whole tale. And this is a very competitive Heart South conference every year. So them going zero and five, I don't think, is a testament to them being bad, it's more of a testament to the conference just being super competitive. I also think when when we go through this, I, I think that Moval is a little unlucky with that 0-5. We'll get to a team a little later on that I think was a little lucky um, based on the numbers to have the record that they did. And, um, you know, sometimes it just, it's it, that's the way the cookie crumbles. You'll lose a couple of close close games and, and you get that offer and they'll be looking to get off the schneid next year. Um, you do have Shepard Falaga coming back on your defensive line, uh, who was a nice piece for you there. 47 tackles, seven and a half tackles for a loss and two sacks, but you lose two first team all conference offensive linemen. And that's, that's a toughie to recover from. Yeah. Uh, Never easy replacing those guys up front. So I don't know. It'll be it'll be interesting to see who they bring up. Um, I feel like a lot of these programs have guys kind of on the back burner in the trenches. So might take a year or two for them to build them up. But Missouri Valley, they're storied enough at least to where they can get decent guys in there. So 
Yeah, and kind of the, the story of this bottom half is you return a lot on offense, but about half of your defense, and I feel like that can go one of, one of two ways here. We could either t- turn into the NAI version of the Big 12 here where we're just scoring points in bunches and to heck with the defense, or these defenses can uh, get better with the improved with, with new talent underneath, and I'm, I'm not exactly sure which one we're going to see here out of kind of the bottom half of the Heart South. Yeah, it'll be curious to find out. It's it's so hard to predict, like, in most conferences, these bottom teams, how they rebound, how they respond to things, how they figure it out, because some of them stay at the bottom, some of it just, like, one year turn it all around. <laughs> Absolutely, and with that, we'll be right back after this message from our friends at AdCraft. So you want to create and sell custom merch for your team or business. That's exciting, but where do you begin? How much inventory should you order? How do you distribute orders? AdCraft has your answers. Streamline the way you offer custom merch by utilizing our risk-free web store service. We ship directly to each customer, and we have the fastest turnaround in the game. Raise funds for your team or get merch to your employees and patrons. Contact AdCraft today and let's bring your merch to life. I don't know if you saw it uh, today when we are recording this podcast, but uh, just a beautiful uh, faux, uh, faux throwback, faux back Grandview shirt that they uh, put on, on their Twitter feed today. It is... Uh, it's gorgeous, man. I love, I, I love that look. That that faux back look is is very, very nice. And uh, you know, it, it's it's nice to have have folks that support us. It's even nicer to know that they're really good at what they do, and we're so thankful to have them on our side again, rocking the the Grandview uh, shirt that that uh, they sent my way. Uh, I think last year, um, thanks to them, they do a great job again. Uh, NAI born and bred, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of Grandview fans over there, but um, they definitely are are looking at this uh, conference both north and south. So, going to the top half, here's the team that I feel might have gotten a little lucky. Last year, Mid American Nazarene. You're seven and four, three and two in the South. You're 45th in SP plus. You have an amazing offense, sixth in the NAIA with 5.18 yards per play. But you have that negative split there with one of the worst defenses in the NAIA. Yeah, I also think this was a team that just put all of the eggs into the offensive basket. It was clear by how they played and their scores, like they knew what they were. Um, And there's something to be said for a team that knows that. (laughs) Obviously, you'd like to improve the defensive side of the ball, which I think is very capable for them. They're returning a lot of guys on the defensive side. They're returning most of their um D line, all of their D line, uh, some of their linebackers, some of their DBs, but a lot of guys who made noise, you know. Um Cave, uh Anthony Sow was on that side of the ball, and uh Calvin Brossard, who was a big part of that D line, is coming back too. I think that's huge for them to improve that defensive side of the ball. Some notes here for for MNU. Um they went four weeks in a row where they didn't trail in a game. Um, they are breaking ground, starting to dig this summer on their brand new stadium and a renovated locker room. Um, this was, uh, Paul Hansen's second year was 2022. And, and just like we've said before with, with Graceland and, and so many others, that's really where you see a lot of growth. They return nine all conference players as, as you see here, well, eight players over nine positions. Isaiah Williams takes up two. Um, Anthony Parsons, that quarterback there, he has the NAI single game passing record uh, from last year. You've got Sean Cherry, 
who they think might be an All-American candidate at the end of the season. Anthony Sal led their team in tackles and interceptions last year, and he's already attracting some some pro ball looks. Um, that's that's a dude right there. Um, also getting in a couple of um, of transfers here, uh, Lance uh, Lance Jones from Western New Mexico and uh, Matt Georgie from Pitt State coming from the Gorillas. Uh, trying to shore up that linebacking core there, but it's it's definitely a um, that's a good one right there. Their first game next season. It's going to be this is going to be fun. Mid American Nazarene at Langston. Wow, that game's going to have eight million points scored in it. I think. <laughs> hey man, I am looking forward to it. <laughs> Then, the, then they're gonna have to, shoot out. They're gonna have to come back back to to Earth real quick because the next week's Grandview, and uh, you're not scoring. Oh God. You're, you're not, you are not scoring eight million points on Grandview. No, it'll be one way to the other pretty quickly. But I am confident in this offense. They bring everybody back. Caleb Tannis, who I feel like we talked about pretty much almost every week during the season last year, is back. He's a guy. Like he's a they'll dude. be fine. <laughs> yeah, that, that that dude's a dude. He's uh yeah. Yeah. 651 yards, sure. That's not that impressive, but 14 touchdowns on that many many mm-hmm. uh yards is terribly impressive. Uh Isaiah Williams with, with 745 yards and wasn't even a first team wide receiver. Um these guys are going to be fine. Um it's it's just you you got to think that you are going to be able to uh, leverage your last season, especially on the recruiting trail, to make gains for you next season. And this is the first team where we've seen a majority and heavy majority returning on both sides of the football. Mm-hmm. And it's, like you said, for recruiting, it's easy to sell to anybody that wants to play a lick of offense <laughs> when you're looking at this team. So. Right and and look, if you're a quarterback, their their quarterbacks coach um, was on roster uh, for the Green Bay Packers. I mean, you've you've got a guy who was a pro quarterback at the highest level. Yeah, you, that's that's a hundred percent kind of the place you'd wanna wanna be. Now, we go from there to a team that is very accustomed to the NAI playoffs. And that's the winningest team in NAI history. The Baker Wildcats unseating Moval last year. Um, ended the 2021 season tied. Took that lead last year. Uh, unfortunately, that's uh, that lead is still only uh, two games for, for Baker. Um <laughs> It's unfortunate. I feel like Baker was really, really unlucky as well. You have a sub-500 record, and you're almost top 25 in SP+. They were insanely good, and I think uh, any box score watchers would probably be surprised, but if you watch them play, like they were just phenomenal. They just couldn't quite get it done on multiple occasions. Very tough squad there. And you mm-hmm. return a, a lot of players. Yes, you, you're you're losing a little bit there. Um, you know, a couple of, of all conference selections in Terrell Simpson and Mitchell Henry. But you're returning Cole Fisher, who is a thousand, nearly a thousand yard rusher. Will Roberts, who has a kick return, a punt return to his name. You know that guy's a little shifty. Um, and and a any combo of Shane Squirlo and Cannon Karn there is is absurd. Squirlo was incredible as a as a freshman. I could I I think where it says DL, just think of that as as your uh, your Jack linebacker. I'm I'm fairly certain he played uh, without his hand in the dirt a, a little bit there uh, for Baker. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's this is a really good defense and. Uh, Man, I feel like they're more more reloading, and this might be a good pick for 
I don't know for the for the heart south if maybe they can put it together and get a little lucky. I think so. I think there's a very well rounded um and you bring everybody back, you keep that steadiness. There's something to be said. Obviously, you look at a team like Mid American Nazarene who's very like up and down, you know, you get a team that's more steady. I think that also can reflect in your results if you do put it together. Here's, so very here's, excited to see this team. Here's the big thing though that, that we haven't mentioned yet. Head coach Jason Thorin uh, from last year is now the sen- a senior defensive analyst at Mississippi State. Um, and you've pulled in Miguel Regalado from Clark, where Clark was surging and, and doing well and, and actually beat Baker last year. Um, and they went, mm, yeah, we'll take that one. And, and your Baker, you can, you can do that. Um, but I wonder how long it's going to take to get uh, Regalado uh, kind of in, in the flow of things. And so that's, that's why I would be... A, to me, I, I would push pause a little bit on Baker. They've got the dudes to do it, but they may be a year away. For sure. It's something to take note of. And then we look at the returning champion for the Heart South, and that's going to be the Benedictine Ravens, 11-2, and 5-0 and in the Heart South. This is a team that got it turned around very quickly, has turned over their offense very very fast. Um, in, in 2020, they were running uh, a set I formation, two running backs, two tight ends. Real football. Real football the way God intended it. Um, <laughs> and they've turned the offense into a very uh, a modern conventional offense in an awful, awful hurry and a darn good one at that. I wish this would stop working because <laughs> I I want to see more real football. But hey, if it works, it works. I mean, this team was insanely good last year. Definitely one of the best in the country, and they're returning like a lot of their dudes. A lot. Um, the biggest thing of note, though, Garrett Kettle. Yeah. Uh, not back. That's. It's pretty big time. Over three thousand yards, thirty-two touchdowns, and on the ground had ten. And that's a yeah, that's important. And right, and Ray Sean Mills. So you're losing a thousand yes. yards of rushing between those two. You lose your your uh, mountainous tackle Chimacora for who is now on the roster of some team in Philadelphia known as the Eagles. Um, Something like that. Something like that. Anyway, they're 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 no good at all, right? I, you, you know, um, but but look, you you've got the pieces that you lose are big freaking pieces. Um, you've even your backup quarterback for Benedictine was a senior last year. You've got to find a dude that's going to play quarterback. Because you bring back so very much. You've got Jacob Gathright that's coming back, who is almost a 1,200-yard receiver. Jay Sean Todd, who was uh, 602 yards and two kick return touchdowns. You know what he's capable of. Two all-conference offensive linemen. Uh, your special teams is going to be fine between Harry Bauke and Cullen Bruner. Uh, there is a lot of possibility here with this team, but you got a lot of pieces to replace. And this is a program where you do have to question, are you reloading or are you, you know, is, I would say they're kind of on the brink between those programs that just reload every single year, the Northwesterns, the morning sides, you know, those squads. Yeah, are they a are team they that has be able a window? To do that? Yeah. So, do they have do do they have a window? Is that window shut now, or is this a team that always has the window partially open? Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's a really good question, and I don't I don't know the answer to it. I I I, yeah. I have what I think is the answer to it, but I'm not going to be able to say for sure until I see who they put out at quarterback. Truthfully, yeah. And here's the fun part. 
<laughs> we're going to get to our picks, and, and uh, I'm fixing to tell you what I think because I think Benedictine's going to win. Again, I think that you've got too good of weapons coming back. You've got too good of an offensive line coming back. Um, the one that we didn't actually mention on, on here for Benedictine that I forgot to put on there is Jagger Blue Ball, the transfer from William Penn um, at, at linebacker who was so, so good for the Statesman last year. Um, that helps plug a little bit of a hole there on your, on your defense. My dark horse, I think this is going to be the, the, the sexy pick, honestly. Uh, everyone loves offense, and you got to see if you're going to be able to, uh, to leverage, leverage that. John is pretty much going the same direction as me, thinking the same way. Matt, what do you got? Got a bit of a pivot for the winner here. Give me Baker. I like Baker. I like... Everybody they bring back, yes, they do have a new head coach, but especially under a first year, they're going to find a way to plug him in in a way that's comfortable more so to the team than what he wants to do. That's what tends to happen anyways with a lot of this, unless the program is just that bad, which Baker's not. So I think they have a lot to work with. I think Benedictine is too wild card for me with figuring out that quarterback position, some of the other spots they're losing. There's too many question marks for me. I think Baker is a more, I don't even, like a more stable pick. Like it just makes more sense with all the pieces that you know for sure you're going to have. Um, and I'm going Mid-American Nazarene for the Dark Horse. No surprise. I mean, holy cow, this offense is going to put up a bajillion points again. <laughs> right. So for uh, the import here, it's my favorite. What I'm going to call out here is, is going to be Nate Soapbeer, uh, Rowdy Raven on our, uh, on our Discord, uh, the head Raven himself. You're going to catch a little flack for, for picking Baker for, for, for Nate here. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, I know what I'm doing by making <laughs> this pick, and I know it's not a good omen for me, but it's fine. Nate's, we'll, we'll deal with it later. Nate's one of the, the, the great folks who sat through the playoffs with with me on our live stream i swear there's about six or no there's about 10 hours of live stream that we did during the playoffs uh doing a watch along and and nate was there for dang near every minute of it so so he is he is one of our goats if you want to be one of our goats as well just go to patreon.com slash naif ball we th we think the the couple of new folks that have jumped on Dylan Gonzalez and Ryan we we appreciate y'all uh, throwing your hat in with us and uh, well I'll read the rest of them. Nathan, Nathan Moore Dale Norton Tim Burrow Julie Lout Stephen Cutler Julianne Shager Brian Shakes Stephen Speakman Justin Hoffman Tyler Pierce Kyle Gregory Hayden Ferrigno Nick Ryan Ace Wellen Jerry Quickle El Alex Garcia Fred Christensen Shirley LaBella, Jeremy Vobble, Roger Meyer, Bob Boone, and DSU Cone. It's going to be an absolutely fun year this year in, in the heart. You've got some teams coming. You've got a couple of teams going. But, man, the heart's going to be good on both sides once again. I think so. And I'm interested to see out of the top three teams who it's – who it's going to come down to. Cause I think you could very easily find yourself in a situation where they all beat each other. And then we're left with some weird tiebreaker. <laughs> hey, weird tiebreakers are one of my favorite parts <laughs> of the NAIA man, <laughs> trying to figure them out and trying to one, trying to figure them out two, trying to figure out where the information is so <laughs> that I can figure it out. Is that uh, the fun part of this is that we don't know anything half the time. Uh, you know, there, there, there's a certain amount of, of, of off the seat of our pants that we, that we get to do. And uh, it's the NAI, man. It's the Wild West of, of college football. And we're, we're here trying to, to keep the peace as the sheriffs of the OK Corral. Yep, pretty much. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the NAIF Ball Podcast presented by AdCraft USA. Be sure to contact them for all your custom apparel, merch, and uniform needs. If you enjoy the show, subscribe to the podcast as well as to our YouTube channel. Leave us a review if you're listening on Apple Podcasts.
As always, if you'd like to support what we do, head over to patreon.com slash n-a-i-a-f-b-a-l-l and become a patron. We can't do what we do without our sponsors and listeners like you.